And I want us to hear this. Here's, here's some words that have been said today that have been even saying from the stage is mercy, faithfulness, steady. And I think he wants to really drop this in our midst this morning. He wants to awaken us to this reality that he is faithful, that he is steady. Revelation 19, John said, I saw him, I saw the heavens split, and I saw him on a white horse. And he said, there's one on a horse, they call him faithful and true. John 12 says that he saw Jesus coming into the city on a colt. Revelation 19, John, the same writer, says, I see him coming on a white horse. And John 12 says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, prophesying about the one on the colt. And I'm sure John in, John, in Revelation 19, John's undone because he sees the man who was on a colt is now on a white horse. And a sword comes from his mouth and he divides everything that is right and wrong. And beloved, he sets up his kingdom and he's called faithful and true. When you look that word up faithful in the Greek, it means steady, genuine, unchanging. He cannot change. It's not even in his agenda. He cannot. He is so faithful and true. John had a revelation of this. I mean, of all the names that could be given to the Son of Man, this name is ascribed to Him. He's faithful. He is true. Yes, yes. Beloved, this is the fuel for our tanks. This is what's going to keep us going. Yes. David said, surely, goodness and mercy. There's that word we've been talking about today. Mercy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. When you look at that word shall in the Hebrew text, that's the strongest legal term you could use when something is going to be done. If you said shall, then that meant it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's a decree. It's going to happen. No matter what kind of mood they're in, when they say shall, it better happen. It's going to happen. David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That word mercy is the word radaf in the Hebrew. It means to chase down or to pursue like a hunter chases down its prey. I was, on the, I was on the lake the other day, and we were in, this, we were in a boat, and, and, and I looked back, and uh, my son was tubing on the boat. And, and I looked back and checking on my son on the tube, and there's a rainbow, because uh, the boat's throwing up mist, and, and it's a sunny day, so there's a rainbow there. And I'm like, that's beautiful, man. That's awesome. And uh, I think it's cool how rainbows work. You know, rainbows, when the sun hits mist, the water, the water actually exposes what's already in the light. So when we're out in the sun, we're missing all these colors, all these rainbows. It's there, it just needs the water to expose it, right? Come on, somebody. I'll let you finish that thought out. God wants to reveal the sun, but He needs the water, the Holy Spirit, to bring it and expose it before our very eyes. Man, He's good. And I look back and there's this rainbow and I'm like, man. And so we keep going and I look back again and guess what? The rainbow's still there. Third or fourth time I look back, the rainbow's still there on the side of the boat. And I'm like, the, the Holy Spirit like just ambushes me in that moment. He says, you can't get away from my rainbow. And I said, oh wait, hold on. David said, surely goodness and mercy, it'll follow me. In the Hebrew, you could read it like this. The goodness and mercy will pursue me like, an, like, a, like a hunter does its prey. You can't get away. It is vicious, man. The mercy of God is so vicious and ferocious. It is furious love, man. You can't get away from it. All we need is just the Holy Spirit to show us what's already around us. Man. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. I couldn't get away from it. I'd turn left, I'd turn right, go straight. The rainbow's there, man. Noah said, I'm going to give you a rainbow to remind me of my mercy. It's always there. You cannot shake it. I don't care where you're at, what you're doing. It is there. 
We need to awaken to this reality that He is pursuing us every moment of every hour. We just need Holy Spirit to expose it. To unveil our eyes and show us that He is there. Surely, goodness, it shall be done, shall follow me all the days of my life. I'm, he's so faithful. He's so good. He is so involved in your life. He isn't tucking, telling, running, man. He is there. He's up in your business, man. Come on, somebody. Say, He's up in my business, man. He's so involved. He is. Praise the Lord. Daniel 9, even Daniel... Uh, he says this, Daniel 9 is, uh, is, a, is a picture, or it's a chapter where uh, Daniel is in the midst of trouble. And Daniel has read the prophecies of Jeremiah, and he understands that if his people don't turn from their ways, they're going to end up in, ca in greater captivity. The 70 years is almost over, the 70 years of captivity, because Jer Jeremiah prophesied, if you turn back to the Lord, I will end your captivity after 70 years. But if you don't, there's going to be more. 70 times 7. That's where we get forgiveness of 70 times. You was going to be, he knew it was either 70 years if we repent or 490 years if we don't. And Daniel is in a critical hour in history where he goes, I need to call upon the name of the Lord for my people. Otherwise, we're going to be here for another 420 years. It's a picture of where we're at in America. Across the nations of the earth. We need a revival. We need our eyes open to what's already there. Amen. And we don't just need a revival out there. Beloved, we need one in here. We need a revival in the church. We need our eyes open to what's already there. Amen. That's the Christian journey is finding out what you already have. It's the treasure. And Daniel finds himself in a critical hour of history. And he says that Daniel began to call up on the name of the Lord. I come before you according to your mercy and your faithfulness. I call upon what's already there, God. And I call it to manifest in my generation. That's how he prayed. And we know that after seven years, God let them go back to their land and rebuild the temple. And they fulfilled the purposes of God. Why? Because someone had a revelation of God's faithfulness and His mercy and they called upon it. And Daniel not only prayed they, God, I pray You'd forgive them. How did he pray? He said, I pray You'd forgive us. This is the beauty of intercession is that we take upon ourselves the burden of humanity. We say, God, forgive us. We've got to quit this finger pointing Christianity. Yeah. Beloved, I'm telling you, we've got to take this burden of intercession. This is why we, we sow into prayer countless hours. This is why I'm, I'm determined to build a place where we call upon the name of the Lord to take upon ourselves the burden of a generation and say, God, what is already available, the mercy and faithfulness of God, we pray that You would awaken hearts to what is already there. That you would awaken sinners out of their drunken stupor and you would release the spirit of revelation upon a generation. Show them that the Father is running after them. 